Welcome to the Daily Jerry Anderson podcast, which today finds the presenter repairing damage done to the show by Mr. Coyle's two-day stewardship. Has the show been holed below the waterline? Have all the watertight compartments been breached? And is she listing fatally to starboard? Only time will tell. I believe you were playing... Now, I, I can hardly say this. Yes. I believe you were playing... Chris de Berg. No. Well, not true. Not uh, true. I not, have the documentary not, evidence here that suggests you that you have were playing. Not. I did not play Chris de Berg. Well, I, I didn't think you would, because I didn't think you'd stoop that low. Here's the here's the offending uh, yes. email. Oh, master, the past two days were awful. Red Hurley, Mickey, never, never played Red Hurley. Mickey, Bob, Who? Nigel, and Snitch. Chris de Berg. No. Yes, they, no. Chris de Berg. No, I, I, I kid you not. Okay, you deny this? Uh, yes, I... You no, deny it? No Chris de Berg. All right, then. At the mere tender age of 67 years, uh, my cat, Pierre, couldn't take the strain and attempted to end it all by eating 2,000 Maltesers. He, of course, ended up being stuck to the ceiling for most of the day, as the Maltesers are so light. He suggested that the ice cloud was actually a result of Sean Coyle blowing all the dust from his ancient records. That's cruel. There's no need for that. Master, do you recall the high winds on Monday? Well, at the start of Monday's show, Sean Coyle took a, sh- a call and the conversation started, Well, Sean, where's Turkey Neck? Sean did nothing to defend your poultry-based neckline, but actually insulted you further when the conversation went on discussing the high winds. He said, and I quote, Yes, the weather is terrible. Jerry's wig will be blown off. Just thought you needed to know that. I would like to say, on behalf of myself and my family, that I don't have a wig. Yet. Yet. The talk turns to television, always a prickly subject as far as the presenter is concerned because he is not on it often enough. Because of this, he claims that TV is no good anymore, knowing that he would change his tune if he got a series. Last night on Lesser Spotted Ulster, the bold Joe Mahan wearing Wellingtons spun around like a ballerina to demonstrate how a salmon gets tangled up in a mesh net. I've never seen Joe doing that before. No. Must go back to the eye player. As Joe stared, fish like out of the mesh, it was not salmon I was thinking of, but cod. Later, have a go, Joe, sheared a sheep and left it looking like a punk rocker. <laughs> to which Seamus Heaney said, By burn and fen, by hill and glen, where snowing, flowing torrents flow, with silvery hair beyond compare, tis there you'll find our Joe. <laughs> tis there you'll find. Or Joe. Do you know, that's something I can't understand why you TV presenters. <laughs> Notice how my dirty laugh at that. Yes. No, well, but when you TV presenters, when you're, when you're doing something to camera, for instance, let's just take the sheep shearing. It's hard to say that, uh, isn't you it? Be careful. You yes, must okay. be careful. You take your time with I that see one. That, yeah. All right. And, for instance, at Balmoral. Yes. They had a guy who could shear a sheep and... Two minutes. You ask yourself, what's the point? No, but, you know, I think I think it's good. That's, that was great to see. But I don't want to see the likes of you attempting it. No, neither do I. You know, what's the point in the presenter trying it just to make the presenter look stupid? You know, here's a guy who's perfected this, and it's an art and a craft. He can shear a sheep in two minutes. Not often you see it, so you want to see it done, and you want to see it done properly. Why do you want to see the presenter trying it? I can explain that. Yes, go ahead. There was a time not so long ago when TV was important, Mm -hmm. when people who were on TV were regarded as being somebody. Do you know what I mean? It still lingers, like Ryan Tuberty, people like that. But there was a time when people thought presenters were talented and indeed had some kind of different little thing that the rest of us did not have. But now they realise that they're just the same as the rest of us. So, uh, there was a time about 10, 15 years ago when it was good to see the presenter doing something, trying something, because the people who were watching were interested in what the presenter was doing, because they kind of liked it, but now they don't care one way or the other. But the people who still run TV programmes don't know that the people don't yeah. care about presenters, and they don't realise that people don't care if they want, they want to watch some sheep, sheep sharing or not. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a throwback to the days it's when people... See people, see, people who work in television now, they still think a television is important. They don't realise that it's not anymore. It doesn't mean anything. This programme is not without heart when it comes to the milk of human kindness. All humans are treated with contempt, but animals are different. They're nice. Most of them can't speak for themselves, but many of them can kill you. If anyone can help and needs further information, there's a, there's a, there's a phone number here. 
So there we are. If uh, the, They're looking for a mammy. And Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. A nurse male, a nurse mare for an orphan foal. Yeah. Dear Scaldy Bum. Would you, get the, would you get the foal back? I don't know how that works. Yeah, how does that work? I, I don't know. Can the can the mammy then claim it because it was a sort of like a foster mammy and say I or what? What? what how does that work? <sighs> I think maybe they discuss it with the do, horse do, do, social do, worker. Do what you see, say I say I had a mare, a good big healthy mare, and you came to me as an orphan, and 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 I, I let you do what you had to do to me. Thrice <laughs> <laughs> nay, thrice <laughs> nay. Do I charge you? Oh, it all depends. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never charged before. Uh, why, why break the habit of a lifetime? What happens there? Uh, stop it. Okay. Don't go there. <laughs> I hope the second stage of the transplant went well. You see, these people think because I take a couple of days that I'm inching towards that thatch. Yes. Yeah. Well, I have, there are developments on that front, you know. Is there? The oh, hardest. yes. Come on. Or should I say on that back? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I have, I have uh, developed a cunning plan. Oh, right. you know nothing about this. And I, I don't think I should reveal this because it's not been made public yet. Right. But I think I have found a way to get the thatch done. Free. Oh, free? Absolutely. Did you hear that word at the end there? Free. Yeah, free. Uh-huh. Many thousands of pounds will be saved so they can use them to drink and smoke cigarettes. What? I can't tell you anymore, but it's a very cunning plan. Anyway, I'm a bit worried that the world You're might have I ended... This. You're going to do a programme on men who have slightly... Not at all, for God's sake. That's the easy way. Uh, I hope the second stage of the transplant went well, but I'm a little worried that the world might have ended like that mad bloke, bloke predicted, but we didn't realise it yet. Think about it. The tornado in America, the new Icelandic ash cloud, the price of drink and fags, and the crap music Sean played yesterday. We're all doomed. Hen parties are wonderful things. The danger being that they occasion no different behaviour from the women that you can witness during an everyday girl's out. There's no difference between an ordinary girl's night out and a hen party. There was a time when the hen parties were an excuse to let their hair down. But what happens when that same hair has been down for some time? Coilus Interruptus is aghast at the possible consequences. What are your thoughts of hen parties? I've never been to one. I know you haven't, but you've been in places where one has been going on. I women, haven't. women running about full no. of drinks, slightly scantily no. dressed. You've never, you've never, never even seen, seen that. No, no. Where do you go? I've never been. Uh, but have you ever seen women out in the ras? No. You must have. You must have seen them going past. No, wearing little horns. No. And the bridesmaid Seriously? wears the veil. No. Um, never. Hardly wearing hardly anything. It's great. I follow them around anywhere. <laughs> no, I've never been. You're, you're not alive at all. The leading hound, or alpha female, would tick all the wrong boxes for Sean. One, tattoo on arm, green, white and orange shamrock, denoting a Catholic, or some are Protestant who got full in Portrush, ended up in Sailor Bills and got the first tattoo they saw. Two, drinking pints of fizzy beer. Three, smoking fags. Four, dresses in white dress, which was ten years and three stone, past its best buy. Naturally, at this stage, I was attracted to her and about to say in the best fancy voice, Hey, doll, are you looking for a court tonight? But I was beaten to the punch by a young lad barely out of his teens. Sean, close your ears. The women, or indeed praying mantis, got the skitter of a cub in a half-Nelson stroke hybrid stranglehold and proceeded to kiss him. With a degree of sadomasochistic violence, how her jaw never cramped is beyond me. Her technique can best be described as like a dog eating hot chips. It was savage. After about five minutes, I was timing it. The carnivorous munching was over. And as she departed from the club, striking up a fag, I noticed she had managed to mark her territory. On the man's neck was a huge love bite. David Attenborough doesn't need to sneak about the Serengeti. He needs to sit about Oma on a Saturday night with a secret video recorder. Much more enjoyable, I find. <laughs> Hear that false laugh there? Yeah, will a dog not eat hot food? <clears throat> dog doesn't like hot food. Is that right? Absolutely not. I, I thought you thought would have thought of it that. until you mentioned it there. No, you yeah. see, dogs, why would a dog eat hot food? When was the last time you've seen a dog in a burger bar? Yeah, well, not be I don't honest know. with yourself. When was the last time you've seen a dog saying... <laughs> Yeah, but you've never, never seen, seen a dog. That. You've never seen a dog lying down beside some, a bit of meat lying, waiting for it to go cold. Exactly. It, a dog will eat it, It'll gobble it up. What do you mean? 
It does, I'm asking you, does a dog know when food's hot? It knows when food's hot, but it doesn't like it. Yeah, but it'll still eat it. Will I it? used to have will a it? dog. I know what I'm speaking of. If I, if I had a little chop right, and I gave it to my, my dog and it was just off the pan, right. but not too hot, it would turn up its nose at it and shuffle it about with its nose All right. and wait until it cooled yeah. down. Mm. They don't like that hot stuff. I've never yeah. tried it with a steak. What's this? Never you mind. Okay. I select all these songs specially because I know you'll hate them. So now I hear... It is not generally known that the presenter is a mother. <laughs> it is not generally known that the presenter is a mother. It's spelt the same as mother, but with a different connotation. I suppose you could say he's a mother packer. We set this kind of, not a trap, but a kind of a facility. Yeah. For moths to come in, to we put a light on it, and yeah. moths don't, of course, you know the way they, they seem to be attracted to the light. They're not attracted to the light at all. It's just something that happens to them, and they're scared by it, and they blunder into it. Uh, it's, that's what it is. They think it's something else entirely. So we managed to catch a number of moths. What, what but type? at the end what, of it, what, what type did you catch? I can't remember what type. Uh, you, what, 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 what's your favourite? The ones that come out of your wallet. No, what's your favourite moth? I don't. I don't have a favourite moth. That's but like you saying, need a program on them. That's just like saying, "Who's your favourite child?" Yeah, but they, they came to you. Do you ask you to, to make a program on moths? The BBC asked you to make a program on moths. I don't know the names of any of them. <laughs> I did it to help out. Right. I was asked. Well, tell to me do this then. You see, during the day, BBC presenters were. Where asked, would you get a moth during the day? You don't get them during the day. Where do they go? They go to their little moth balls. Where? They live in where moth do, balls. Where do they hide? Wardrobes. No, you ever see a mothball? That's a wee moth's house. Do you not know that? Yeah, but outside, where do they go? They live in there. They go into trees. They're just like butterflies. They get a very bad press, moths do. Do they? Moths are just the same as butterflies. But they bite you. And whenever you see... Let me see, there you go. There you go. That's what? the type of bad press. You, you're immediately thinking negatively about a moth. I, I a, know. I ask you, would a moth bite you? Of course it wouldn't. Are you, you look at a, a butterfly bite you? Do you break a butterfly upon a wheel? If you see a butterfly go, oh, look at the butterfly, look at Look at that nice butterfly. Yeah. Have you seen the moth? You go, God, give me that paper. Don't no, you? I, no, I do yes, not. Yes, you do. No, no. Yes, you do. No, I do not. Your immediate instinct is kill a moth. No, I do not. I wouldn't And I mean, how many times have you killed a butterfly? Never. I just pluck the wings off them. Right. You see a, you see a wasp climbing up your, 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 your window. No, yes. your window. Yeah. What no. do you do? Your wallet in your case. No. Do you, do you, get, a, do you get a paper and swat it? Or I do certainly you do, do not. Or do you I... open the window wider and say, shoo, shoo. Which I do. You get a bit of kitchen roll and you go, fluff, fluff, fluff. The only thing uh, I feel for when I see it crawling up a wall or a window is a bumblebee. Because I know a bumblebee's lifespan is quite short. And that they will not survive within the environments of the home. But I know that a moth who stumbles into my house will live for many years in the house because he's happy in there. Years? Years? Oh, all right, days then. I don't know anything about How long moths. does he live? I don't know. You made a program, television program about them. I made the television program because people wanted us to do television programs about things that we cared about. So I says, "Well, what's left?" <laughs> you said moths. Okay, I said that'll do me. <laughs> it is a mistake generally to attend a rock concert if a man is over forty, unless he is aware that he looks stupid and adjusts his behaviour accordingly. Oh, that others would know this and be aware. But you know, when you were young, because you were never young, really, in any conventional sense. Remember you used to go to kind of concerts and things like that and there was always some guy in front of you who stood up and danced in front of you, you know? No. And he always had a jump around with a hole in the, in, in, you know, in the elbow and he'd be going, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. And he'd be dry and he'd never sit down. People would say, sit down, you big idiot. And he never sat down, you big butler scrumpy, you know, and he never sat down. Never and heard. every single, but you never went to anything like uh, that. The last concert I was at was the Clancy Brothers. <laughs> Sean, we're not talking about the Clancy Brothers here. Talking about rock and roll. This is a different thing. Although, having said that, if it hadn't been for the Clancy Brothers, there may not have been a Bob Dylan. Yeah, exactly. And without Bob Dylan, there may not have been many of the bands that are here today. So never mind that. 70 years ago today, did you play anything by Bob Dylan yesterday? I really told you that, yes. D you Dumpner, fr Dumpner from Newry wants you to play Forever Young. Forever Young. Anyway, uh, the thing that disappointed me about the people was all the guys who used to stand up and, you know, and actually ruin it for everybody else. They're still there. They're still standing up. They're all 50 and 60 now. But you can recognise them. I go, I saw him in Woodstock. And all these same people. And do you know what they did? I was up in the deer But they're seats. saying the same thing about you, you remember? No, they're not saying the same I, thing yeah, about you. Why not? But do you know why? Because I went in 
And I sat down and I watched the show and I didn't go to the toilet once. Because when you go to the toilet, the whole row has to get up. Right. Oh, I, yeah. The people who were there were going to the toilet once every four seconds, right? Because they were baiting beer into them. They had like half a dozen, they had six packs with them. They were buying six bottles and just baiting it. They were going straight to the toilet. And the most amazing thing was there were special uh, special kind of incidents during the concert but were significant incidents, very visual things that you needed to see. Mm-hmm. That's the time when they decided to go to the toilet. Now, for instance, at the end of the show, right? Sounds like a nightmare. It would be a nightmare for you, but for yeah. a normal person see, it would be I would, great. I, I, would, I would want to hit those people. Of course you would. No, you want to hit the people on the stage as well. You'd want to hit everybody mm. there. Everybody connected with that show, you would have them arrested. No, the man with the sick pack should have been handcuffed to the seat. No, but they were all made, like that. They were all like that because what, I, what, I, what actually happened was that, you see, they, they were kind of nervous at being at the show and they were frightened in case they wouldn't enjoy themselves. So they'd need more drink, more yeah, drink, more yeah. drink. And they had big, you know, big pint plastic glasses that spill over you when they're walking over. Yeah. And, they walk, and everybody was hitting you in the back of the head because when they get drunk, you see, they don't say sorry or nothing. Just hit you in the back of the it's, head when they're going past. Uh, I, 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 no, but you see, no, 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 but see, this is all right. Cause I understand these people. I, I want to go now and hit those people. I understand these people. I understand these people. But I'm saying it's a very, very unusual thing to witness. It's, well, you see, these are people who'll be dead soon, you know, so they may as well enjoy themselves. Thank you for listening. Back tomorrow.